Let's welcome Carla Valenzuela. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today, and I can't wait to get my hands on the hair. Today, we're going to be doing two bridal half down styles. And what's really cool is that they're, I'm going to make both of them really different from each other. And first, um, I'm going to start off on my girl, Lexi. She is the bohemian bride. So she wants texture. She likes braids. And um, this style is going to be perfect for anybody who um, really just wants some hair down. I feel like most brides who um, one half up, half down styles, um, it's mostly because they feel comfortable with their longer length um, being loose, but half up just kind of keeps the hair away from the face. So for her, I'm going to do more of a boho look, but stay tuned because after her, I'm going to have another one and she's going to be completely different and it is 90s inspired. So let's get started. I already um, went ahead and curled some of her hair and before um, I started curling her, I actually did a directional blow dry with... Um, Guts 10. Prepping the hair with this just really allows me to get some good hold in the hair and not needing to really work with a lot of hairspray as I'm working. Um, so uh, that's what I prepped her hair with. It also gives me volume. And I did spray a little bit of our Redken Iron Shape 11 for thermal protection and hold. And what I'm going to do is so since I'm already working at the top of the head, this is where I want to see a little bit more volume. So before I go ahead and continue to curl, I'm actually going to use my Sanvia Texture Iron. And I'm just going to um, use it at the first inch off the scalp just to get a little bit of more texture and volume in here. And you can see, let me see if you guys need to get a little closer. Okay. So I'm just going to tap it like once, hold it in there for about like a second or two, and just continue on. Now what's really cool about using this iron is that you have control over how much uh, texture you wanna see. So the harder you press it down, the more um, texture you'll see. You can also use thinner sections if you want more volume but if you just want um a little bit you could use wider thicker sections or just not press it as hard um i am getting a little bit closer to the very top so the top layer i'm not going to press it down so much because i'm going to bring this back and i do want to you know have a little bit of the texture less of the texture in there Okay, so um, yeah, you can see how well it's holding shape because of what I prepped her with. So if you guys are um, with me, comment in the um, comment comment any questions that you guys may have, and I will be able to answer them for you. Katie, if you can just read the comments for me, if anybody's commenting, that'd be great. Okay. Hi, Kayla. We have a question from Jamie Wilson. Can you spray that on dry hair and blow dry that in? Okay, so great question. So let me tell you something. I actually prefer it on dry hair. So let's say I'm doing a bride. Um, I will ask the bride to come in with clean hair. And then what I'll do is I'll start to put a heat protector on the hair and then I'll, I'll spray guts on dry and I spray it a lot. Like I want to um, section off the hair like every inch or so and spray it from roots to ends on dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, dry the guts in with a, with the blow dryer and using a paddle brush or a round brush. So I prefer it on dry, but again, you can do it on uh, damp as well. So I'm going, going to be using my Sanvia one inch curling iron and I'm going to be using it as a wand. So I'm just going to detach the spoon and I'm just going to just 
wrap the hair around my iron and um okay so i'm gonna wrap the hair around the iron and i'm going to alternate in every other curl so um just sorry guys excuse my dog <laughs> she's not here but she's loud okay but okay i'm going to curl away now so notice how my curling iron is at a different direction the end is um, uh, pointing down to the floor. And I'm going to keep alternating. And the reason why I want to alternate is because I want to see as much movement as possible and texture. So, okay. All right. And keep going. Um, but what I really like to do with brides is, um, consultation. I always try to do a trial first just because I feel like, um, sometimes they, um, they, they uh, they have an idea what they want, but maybe they don't know if they want to braid in there or not. So I highly suggest doing trials as well if you're doing bridal hair. Um, okay. One more section. Uh, um, now, I'm going to work a little faster here. And you guys notice how um, there is so much hold already. Like you can see that the curl is really formed here because of the guts in there. So I don't really need to work with the hairspray that much. If I work with a hairspray um, while I'm building this style, I'll work with a working hairspray. So I'll use Reckon Fashion Works 12. That is a very, more like a light hold spray. Um, so it's really good for you to start building up on the style. Okay. Cool, I actually have Let's do one more curl right here. All right. So notice how I have the two front sides clipped. Those are clipped out of the way because I'm actually going to do a braid right there. And um, I want to show you guys the difference between um, not doing the texture iron. So this side already has a texture iron here. So you can see, you can see it. The other side doesn't have it so again it's all preference but I feel like the texture iron is perfect for somebody who has very fine hair or maybe it's slippery and you want a little bit of grip in there um, that'll really help you get volume and hold as well so I'm going to start doing a Dutch braid and I like doing Dutch braids for um, boho looks because I feel like the Dutch braid pops a little bit more versus the French braid. So um, I'm going to start with the three strand. And what you want to do is bring the strands under. So if you're with me, uh, type in under. Okay, so we're going to do the, um, the strand that's closest to the screen is going to go under the middle. And then the one behind, uh, towards the wall, is going to go under the middle. Okay. And you're going to continue. So grab, um, bring under the middle. Uh, this is my left hand. So left hand add hair, bring it under the middle strand. My right hand is going to add hair, bring it under the middle strand. And my tension is not very, very tight. And the reason for that is because I'm going to um, pull the braid a little bit just to uh, bring it out more. So I don't want to create too much tension. So again, um, now you have options. So um, for her, I'm just going to bring all this hair uh, to the braid. But if you want to, you can leave some hairs out. Um, okay, so add hair to my right hand, bring it under the middle strand, and okay, so now notice um, 
now I'm working on this side of the head. So since I'm moving more towards the back, my body position is going to change because if I just continue in the same area, the braid is not going to sit right. So always move with your braid. Okay. And now I am not going to be adding any more hair because I want the top of this to stay loose. So I'm just going to finish off the braid with what I already have in my hand, but I'm still making sure that my body position is um, working away. All right. So what I like to do when I'm doing these looks, I like to just finish the braid all the way down because um, then I can decide whether I want to take the elastic off and finish the braid here, but it's always easier to just finish the whole braid in case you decide to keep it. Um, it's, it's so much easier to just take it off than adding it back on when you already have all this work done here. So I'm just gonna continue to braid. And I, the reason why I say this is because sometimes I feel like when you're doing up styles, um, you have an idea and as you're pinning things up and um, twisting things, sometimes um, you end up a little bit different than you had planned. And I feel like that's the fun part of doing, you know, styles. Yeah. I have a question, Carla. Is there ever a time when you're like, your, your client has like a funky hairline or perhaps like a face shape that a braid wouldn't compliment where you would be like, maybe we should change the placement like off of the hairline and move it back or like what- Oh, for, for sure. Yeah. If someone feels um, better with doing a side part, then mm -hmm. you could just uh, do a side part and bring the braid forward or you can just do one side only yeah. of, because I'm doing two braids, I'm connecting them. But if they just wanted one, it's totally cool. I mean, I mean, maybe braids are not for everybody, so maybe they want a twist, and um, you know, a twist would give them that volume and that boho look. I'm gonna turn her so you guys can see uh, me braid the other side in case you are still needing to see how I do a Dutch braid. Um, but yeah, and with this look, I am going to do different. Um, a different technique of braiding that's going to be really simple for um, anybody who doesn't know how to braid. It'll still give you that braided look. So stay tuned because I will incorporate different twists and braids in this one look. Okay, so again, um, this is the side that has the texture iron. And one other thing I forgot to mention, when I was using the texture iron on this side, I actually did all my sectionings in diagonals. So I did a diagonal, diagonal um, forward, and then I, I parted the hair at a diagonal forward, and then I used the texture iron. And the reason why I did it like that is because I wanna make sure that there are no um, openings here. So working at a diagonal, it's really going to help you not get any opening lines, any gaps. So it's all about, you know, um, mapping out your style. Okay, and now I'm getting closer to her ear. So this is where I stopped in the other side and I started shifting my body position. And I'm just going to leave this curl out here and, okay. okay, so notice I am moving around. Add hair, I'm just gonna add hair one more little bit. Okay. And my tension is low. But see, I'm not, I'm making sure that my hand is not down here. I want it up here because this is going to sit right at this area. So it's really important that not only you're moving your body around the head, but you're also keeping your hands elevated to where you want your braid to sit. 
Awesome. Carla, we had another great question from Jamie Wilson. I struggle with the smoothness of the style. It always seems messy. Okay. So here's the thing is like, I feel with the boho looks a little bit messy is good. Um, but another thing I learned through, you know, doing bridal looks, um, sometimes the more you touch the hair, the more messy it can look. So whenever I'm working on the hair, I just try to keep my my fingers really light against the hair. Um, also your products that you're using. So if you're going in with uh, a hairspray like Triple Take 32, this is really high hold. So if you're using that to build up on the on the style, you're you're just adding a little bit too much hold and if you're breaking things up it's going to get a little bit more messy but notice how like for this right now i don't want to smooth it out too much if i was looking for a smoother look then i might go to my finishing brush and start to like back comb and smooth this out but because this is more boho i want to see the the waves and the curls. So I'm just going to work with the volume that she already has from the texture iron. And um, I'm just going to slightly start um, pinning this. I'm gonna pin this first, and then I'm going to bring the braids back. But yeah, everything um, was blown back and um, with the texture iron, she has volume. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it really simple and use um, bobby pins. And insert it, and you wanna insert it with the squiggly, the squiggly um, part of the bobby pin towards the scalp. So if this is new to you, say new to me, this part needs to be against the scalp because you're actually going to be able to feed more hair through your bobby pin and get more tension and grip. And another trick is like I like to weave the um, I like to weave the bobby pin um, up and down through the hair too. All right, I'm going to move around to the other side. Cool, there she is, and. You can always go back and pull this up more or pull it down a little bit if you need to. So now that my braids are done, I'm going to start um, making them a little bit fatter by just bringing down the elastic a little bit just to get some space in there. And then I'm going to start, um, uh, I'm going to start pulling out the braid from the bottom up. And you know, boho is texture, so don't be afraid to, to really have fun and start pulling it out because this is going to make it more big. How's everybody doing? Any more questions? Any any um, struggles, other struggles you may have or questions on product? I am here for you. Okay, so here it is. And I'm going to do it on the other side. And the other side does not have the texture iron. And what I notice is like the feel of this is a lot more silky. So the texture iron um, also like helps get some grip in there. Okay. And as I move closer to the top, um, I don't pull the braids out as much just because this is the front of her face. So I don't want a huge loop hanging right here by her forehead, but just enough to get some volume. That way when she takes pictures, you can see all the loops of the braid. Okay. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring um, the braids underneath each other. Underneath. So I'm going to twist it over and under. 
and just secure right there. And the way I'm going to secure is by using an open pin. And here's my trick. So for something like this, I like to use a bigger one. And before I insert it, I'm just going to slightly bend it a little bit just so that it gets to the curve of the head. And I'm just going to insert it in here and um, weave in and out just like I did for the bobby pin. And by bending it to the curve of the head, you're going to get more tension. Cool. So there you go. Now, I'm just going to leave this like this for now. I'm going to worry about it later when I start to look at the style and decide if I like it there or not. Um, but now I'm going to continue and show you another little twist that if you continue to do these twists, you can also almost get like a braided look. So I'm just going to grab um, this section and repeat on the other side. It's about an inch. What I'm going to do is just grab an elastic. So now I'm going to be working with more elastics than actually braiding. So I'm going to grab an elastic, secure it right underneath uh, the braid, and okay. So now that my elastic is in there, what I'm going to do now is just bring my fingers inside that. Um, little gap and bring the tail to my fingers and just pull through. Now you have a little twist and now by pulling it you can get more volume. So now you have the option to like continue repeating this all the way throughout and it'll almost create like, I think it looks very similar to a fishtail braid but with just more loops and twisties. Okay. And if there's any like little frizzies here, I will leave those till the end again, just to see what it looks like and spray it down or maybe add a little bit more texture. So now I'm going to show you a way to get a thicker looking braid without actually, you know, thinking too much, meaning like under, over, under, over. You don't have to do any of that. But um, this is also a really good way for you to create some volume. So I'm going to grab two sections of hair and let me bring her this way so you guys can see. I'm going to grab two sections of hair and I'm going to get an elastic. Hi. Hey, I didn't want to interrupt you. You were on a roll. <laughs> yeah. Carla, I'm just curious, like guests that have a lot more density, do you try to steer them in the direction of a style that has more elastics versus like pins, perhaps? Um, yeah, I think that would, uh, that for sure is a great idea. But I also think, um, I mean, if they have a lot of hair, for me, I feel like that's more possibilities for fuller braids, you know, and I love a full braid. Totally. But, um, another way, like if you're trying to condense hair, I've also um, just kind of braided the hair and tucked it under. So if there was too much hair and I, she didn't want that, and you were working with trying to pin curls, then doing a braid and just securing the braid up against the scalp can work as like a base to support yourself and start pinning curls or little loops. So, okay. So now that I have my two sections, I'm going to secure with an elastic and I'm not going to get super close to the, um, against the head. And here's a trick. Also with the other question with how do you keep um, styles cleaner? I find that the more I loop the hair through the hair, I mean, the more I loop the hair through the elastic, the more hair that's being pulled from areas where I don't want it to grab. So one of the tricks I do is I just grab the elastic. I don't know if you can see it. Here you go. You can see it now. Um, grab the elastic and twist it a couple times. And by twisting it, you're already getting that tension so that you are not having to just loop the hair through many times. So you're just gonna loop it once and that's it. So 
here's the first elastic. Now what I'm gonna do is grab a um, clip. This is my Sambia clip that has a silicone band in here. The silicone band's going to make sure that I don't get any creases. Now what I'm gonna do is grab another two sections and I'm going to have an elastic ready on my hand and I'm going to release this first ponytail and let it fall in between the new two sections I grabbed. And I'm going to secure that with an elastic and twist, twist, twist. And I'm going to repeat. So now this ponytail is going to be, um, and I lost that clip. Oh, sorry, it's right here. <laughs> okay, so uh, how many times do I do that behind the chair? A lot. Okay, so um, I clipped that out of the way, and now I'm gonna open this ponytail, split, split the ponytail into two sections, bring the first pony down, and add it in between those two sections. So my advice is when you're doing this, use elastics that are similar to the hair color that you're working with or clear. Um, you can always hide the elastics too by accessorizing, which I will show you how to. But, okay, twist. And then what am I gonna do now? Split this in half bring it in between or over that pony and add an elastic. And I think this is going to be my last one just because I want these ends to stay loose and curled. Okay. All right, so now that this is here, I'm actually gonna start pulling these just to create more of that volume. And this is loose right here because there's that one ponytail that's sitting in between. So I'm actually going to grab another elastic and just connect the two together. So twist, twist. All right. So pull on these. You can even um, pull tight up against and that'll make it more fluffy as well. But see how this almost looks like a really, really fat fishtail braid. I love that. And you can actually do this ponytail technique up in the scalp and add hair to kind of mock a, um, a Dutch braid. Okay. I, I think I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hide this elastic and all of these by accessorizing. But before I do that, I'm just gonna take another look and now I'm actually going to start breaking these curls that I had already done and seeing if I wanna add any more, any more texture. Um, okay. If you see any frizzies that you don't like, I like to just slightly bring them down with my wand. And I'm just going to curl a little bit more. And I don't think I want to keep these first braids, so I'm going to um, just tuck them in and take off the elastic. There we go. And I didn't really use a lot of pins, so that's why I, I love using the um, I love using elastics because it just makes you feel even more sure that the style is going to stay in place throughout the whole night. She can be shaking her head, whatever she wants to do on her wedding day. So this is going to stay. And it's comfortable as well. You don't ever want to have a bunch of bobby pins or pins on your client's head and have them feel uncomfortable. Okay, one more, I can, you can just start, you know, to feel where you may need to secure it more. 
All right, so let's accessorize. I'm going to use baby's breath. I feel like baby's breath really adds that boho look. And it's also really, really easy flower to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, place them right where the elastics are. And this is really easy for you to, um, the, like the little stem is very easy for you to really stick it in the hair. And if you need to add a pin, you totally can do that. Hey, Carla. I'm just curious, like, would you bring this on location when you're doing a bride or would you like a bride beforehand? Like, hey, can you communicate with your florist to put some baby's breath to the side for my, my upstyles? Um, you could, honestly, I feel like if you took initiative to bring it, that would really add value to your bride's whole experience. Absolutely. So that's a great question. But also you can determine this on the consultation. So I'm assuming, like, I don't think you are going to just show up on site and not know what your bride's going to get done, right? So it's really important to have that consultation and ask her if she's going to want some flowers in her hair. And um, baby's breath are really easy and same as um, wax flowers. I love to use wax flowers. They're really tiny little ones. And um, they're pretty sturdy. So they're going to hold. Awesome. Great question. Okay. So here's my first look. Um, how are we on time, Katie? I don't see the time here. Okay. You're doing right. you're halfway. <laughs> okay, so here's the, the first look. Um, here is the side that does not have the texture iron. This is the side that has a texture iron. So you can see it's a lot fuller. And I could have pulled it out more if I wanted to also. And now um, if you want to, you can start using your finishing spray. So I'll, I'll use uh, Triple Take 32 on the top. And if you want more texture, one of my favorite sprays to add more texture is Redken's Triple Dry. It's a powder spray and that's really going to just really um, ex help you expand these curls and just give it that boho textured look. Okay. Now for my next look, which I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, I was inspired by 90s hair that is that I see is trending a lot. And by that I mean, um, I feel like it's just things come back all the time. And right now um, I'm seeing a lot of girls putting up their hair half up, half down, really um, tight and slick. Also, I'm seeing a lot of ends being flipped. So. I thought like, why not make this bridal? You know, I feel like a lot of brides are doing boho and the classic like really clean um, low buns, which is still really beautiful. But what if your bride um, just wants to try something different or maybe this could be a look for her bridal shower, you know? Are you guys offering um, your brides to have their hair done on their bridal shower or maybe their bachelorette you know this is like more of a fun look it's more for a, a bride that is more on trend so not afraid to try something different and what i love about this is it's going to be completely different from the first it's going to be a lot more polished and have more volume at the ends so what i did for her she already has a bit of texture to her hair. She's not curly, but she's been through a couple processes, so she has texture in there. So I didn't want to add a lot of grippy um, products to her, but I did want some volume. So what I used on, her name is Christy. What I used on Christy, I used our new Wreck and Volume Maximizer. And this is a thickening spray and it adds texture. I use this on the roots, and I also used um, Redken Outshine, 
zero one. So Outshine is a polishing milk. I wanted to use this on her just to help um, get more smoothness and shine. And I wasn't afraid of this product to weigh down the hair because it's only a one. So all Redken stylers have numbers. So the higher the number, the more control you're going to have. So this is a one. So I wasn't afraid that it was going to totally bring her hair down. And um, I will demo how I blew out her hair over here. But before I start, I start on this section, I do want to add that I already went ahead and blew out this part of her hair. And I blew it out as a directional blow dry, meaning everything is sitting at the um, area where I want the hair to stay. So for her, her she's going to have a high pony um, that starts off the, the um, cheekbone. So at a diagonal. So everything was blown out with my paddle brush and I just directed everything up and I did not want volume. So everything here just stayed flat to the head and up to a diagonal. So all that's already prepped. And um, although I don't want volume here, I still added the volume maximizer because it did add control so everything's staying in place right there at the um, direction I want it to sit. Okay, so I'm going to miss this just a little bit because she's been sitting here for a couple minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to demo how I did it and I will keep my blow dryer on low, and this is a time for you guys to ask questions because I will be blow drying. So if you have any questions, Katie can let me know what you guys um, have questions about. So for this, I'm going to use my uh, Sambia Thermal Brush. This is going to help me add volume. If I was working on someone that um, had more texture, then I would work with my um, Blur Bristle Brush. This is going to add shine and smooth out the hair more, but like I said, she does not have any curl to her hair. So I'm just going to use my, um, my thermal brush. Okay. So for this, I'm going to add Molly by the root. Bring it down. So I'm really trying to just polish the hair. So make sure your nozzle is uh, following the brush. So I'm elevating up just to get um, volume. Then as I'm moving towards the ends, I'm actually going to warm up my brush and bring the brush over and come down just so I can really polish the ends. Now I feel like she's still a little damp on the top, so I'm going to go over the root again. Carla, I have a question. Would you recommend this look for guests that have thicker hair since like a lot of it is snatched and pulled back? Would I recommend this to someone that has thicker hair since it's snatched and pulled back? Yeah, so like, you know, half of the hair is pulled back. So the hair that's like down, you know, if that hair isn't voluminous, that would the look like, you know, perhaps? No, I think this could totally work for somebody like that. Like you, you mean someone that doesn't have a lot of volume? Totally, yeah. Y yes, for sure. Because, um, I mean, if she didn't have a lot of volume, you could go in in here and start to use the texture iron. But because I want to keep this very smooth on the outside, maybe I won't use the texture iron just because you can see her profile is very smooth and there's a shape happening. There's It kind of comes out and then it concaves out. So in this area, I would not use the texture iron, but I would use it in the interior if she uh, needed more volume. But you can also add in extensions. So if you need some clipping extensions on someone who doesn't have a lot of hair, um, 
I hope that answered your question, or maybe did I go opposite of your question? No, it's an answer, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so now I'm going to curl the hair up and let it warm up. And after a few seconds, I'm going to switch my dryer to cool. And then start to release. And as I get closer to the ends, I'm just going to release as I twist my wrist or twist the brush just to really polish that. I'm going to do one more really quick. Um, I do have the dryer on low for the sake of like being for you guys to be able to hear better. But to be honest, like something like this, I do feel like you have more control over the hair if it's on a low speed, especially when you get to the part where you're curling the ends out because she doesn't have as much density on the end. So this hair down here um, can very easily just fly away and be out of place so if I had to speed on fast you kind of lose control so sometimes a low speed is actually more efficient so I'm going to heat this up and start to warm it up and then hit the cool button just to lock in the shape and then release. So I just wanted to show you how I did this because for her, she's not getting a lot of iron work, but it's all in the setup. So if I did not do the blowout and I just went straight to the iron, she will not have um, this kind of body that she's having. Okay. So, um, Hold on, she is a little damp right here. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on. I will wanna polish this up a little bit more towards the end, but now I want to show you how I'm gonna put this up. So let me just show you how much of a directional blow dry makes a difference. You see how this hair, like I just let it down, but it's still, directing up. So that's what I love about this, that it's going to be really easy for you to um, put the hair into place without having to brush it a lot. So for her, I am going to start using Fashion Works 12 because I really want to have her ponytail look snatched and smooth. This is going to be a much more uh, cleaner look than the first one. So for her, I'm going to use my finishing brush and I'm just going to direct everything up to my hand and starting up, uh, going with the direction of her cheekbones up. And this sectioning um, is stopping at the top of the ear. So if you notice, it's just at the top of the ear and it has, it's at a diagonal, a very high diagonal. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab an elastic and the trick I showed you guys earlier where you wrap the elastic around your finger multiple times instead of wrapping the hair through the loop multiple times is going to come in super handy for this because I'm going to keep my tension. The more you keep turning the ponytail through the loop, you'll start to lose tension and um, you won't have this smooth look right here. So I'm gonna bring my elastic, um, bring it through once, keeping my tension tight. She's got really long hair. 
And then now I'm going to twist, 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 and bring her hair through one more time. And let it be. So now she's really smooth. Okay. And let me go on with my next step. So I want this to be really high because I feel like this, this is the look I'm seeing a lot, but because this is bridal hair, um, I wanna bring it up a notch. So what I'm going to do is add more volume here and I want her to look very glam, so I want more volume. And what I did is I grabbed one of these donuts. It was actually smaller. This was a baby one, but I cut it. I cut it so that I could use this as a base. And what I'm going to do is just place it under here. And I'm going to use um, I'm going to use one of my open pins and just secure that. And again, I'm going to bend this a little bit and weave it in and out. Actually, I feel like I want a little bit more grip right here. So what I'm going to do to get more grip is um, use my texture iron. I feel like I'm needing a little bit more grip and I'm just going to use the texture iron right there just so that my pen stays in place. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this is like a, an iron you definitely want to have in your kit because you never know when you'll need it. <laughs> just to get more grip. Okay. Put this back in there. Weave it in. And I'm going to use one more. And you want to make sure that you use one of these forms that matches as close as possible to your bride's hair. But this is all going to be hidden anyway, so you won't really be able to see the form. But you still want to make sure you, you get something that's as close as possible to your head. So I'm going to bring her down a little bit just for the sake of me reaching. Um, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start um, adding volume to her ponytail. So I'm going to start from the bottom of the pony and um, gently start backcombing with my finishing brush. So I'm going to backcomb it. I'm not adding a lot of tension and what I'm going to do is spread the hair. I'm going to spread the hair um, and gently smooth it too. When I'm smoothing it, I'm using just the edge of my finishing brush because I want it to be really polished. And I also don't want to remove any of the back combing I just did. So very gently. Now I'm going to grab another section. Okay. Any more questions, Katie, or how are we doing? Doing good. A lot of comments. Beautiful. So gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> loving it. I have a question, though. Um, do you recommend to tease with that finishing brush on, like, polished hair? Or do you ever go for a tail comb? I honestly, I use the finishing brush more. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just because I find it that it does just as much as a comb. if, mm -hmm. And I can also smooth it as I go. Sometimes the comb actually compresses the hair down too much for me. Yeah. So once I like really push in that, it, sometimes I have a harder time, um, a harder time smoothing out the hair. Awesome. So... I don't know if you guys noticed, but earlier I did spray a little bit of the triple dry in the area where I backcombed, just because as I'm feeling her hair, I feel like she needed a little bit more grit. And I'm gonna put a little bit of um, Fashion Works as I'm setting the hair into place. Okay. Uh, 
a um, little bit more. So her ponytail is being sectioned off into pretty small sections because the smaller sections I have, the more I have control over when I'm backcombing and adding volume. So I'm actually gonna spread this into two sections and just kind of marry them together and start to spread it into place. So how are you guys feeling about this? Like, I know this is completely different than what we've been seeing for brides but I also feel like this is fun and it's still going to look elegant and polished. Okay. I personally love the snatched look. <laughs> I do. I also feel like it really like brings out like, you know, like it really literally snatches you. <laughs> Yeah, you're smiling the whole night with ease. <laughs> yeah. Get a facelift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice, you know, your hair is away from your face. I feel like this would be so cute, too, with some, like, I, I don't know, like, some accessories, like, stick-on pearls, perhaps, on the oh, side. Yes. Yeah. I also feel like this is the look for a bride that's going to wear more, like, a like a mermaid fitted dress, you know what I mean? I feel, like that. I feel like this is more like the glam bride or like I said, someone wants to be a little bit different. Absolutely. Okay, so that was the last section. And again, I am working really, really gently just to um, cover that form, but also maintain the volume and so I'm going to bring her forward and you can actually pull on this to create more volume because what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to hide these gaps you're seeing. Love the simple elegance of it. It would really show off her beautiful face. Yes, I thank you for that. And that's the whole point is like that you want your bride to be comfortable and um, you want her to have beautiful pictures, so you don't want any hair to fall on her. Um, so what I'm going to do now to make it more bridal, I'm going to accessorize. And I have this piece of accessory, which is really cool because it's wired and it's very flexible. There's also um, these two loops. So I have versatility with this, um, this particular um, accessory because I could, you know, make it go this way. But for her, this is actually going to help me get even more volume by um, putting it right there. And because it's very flexible, I'm able to bend it around the form. And this is going to add more support and give her more volume. And because she has this, uh, accessory has those uh, little holes at the ends. I can also insert a bobby pin if I felt like she needed more um, hold. But I really feel that this one, since it's bendable, it really stays in place. But I'm just going to add one just for good luck. Uh, one more. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm gonna bring her up because I want to polish. I love that comment, I'm glad you're liking it, thank you. Okay, so I'm bringing her up because now I want to polish her ponytail because her ponytail, remember all I did to the ponytail was do a directional blow dry um, with a paddle brush. So her ends do not have any of that um, bend and flickiness you're now seeing a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my um, Sanvia one uh, and a half inch curling iron, right, Katie? One and a half, yes. 
So I'm going to use this and I'm just going to gently, um, gently curl the ends. And I am going to apply a little bit of Iron Shape 11. Usually it comes in a bigger bottle, but this is the travel size. I'm just going to spray a little bit just so that she can have some hold. And I'm not going to really bring the iron in this area of the hair, which is why I went and, you know, really blew out her hair because I already wanted to, like, make that polish. Right now I'm just focusing more on just giving the ends a little bit more polish and attention. So... I'm just holding the, the curling iron at a horizontal to the floor and curling up. I'm just going to release. So polish a little bit. I wanted her to have like high shine, polish, and a little flick at the ends. And I mean, if it's too much, you can always go back and um, brush it. But I also recommend that when you're doing bridal hair and you leave, whether you're working on site or at the salon, I think it's best for you to leave your bride a little bit more bouncy because naturally the hair is going to fall a little bit as the day goes on. So... Just bringing it up. Okay, so this adding the iron just adds a little bit more shine than if I had just only used the blow dryer. And then now I am just going to take a look and really see if there's any areas that need to be hiding from the form. I don't really see any. So this is now where I'm gonna start spraying it into place. So I'm gonna use um, Triple Take 32 for more hold, but I'm actually gonna spray my brush first. Cause again, I just want it very, very soft. And as I am, um, as I'm brushing the hair, notice I'm flicking it out too. Also, um, let me bring her up more. She just has such long hair. I feel like you guys are, you can see it, but then I look at the screen and you can't see the ends. Okay, so I am spraying the brush and flicking the ends. There, you guys can see it better. And you can even use the can. I love using hairspray cans just to add more of that flip. And I mean, maybe your bride doesn't want this super 90s flip, so maybe you could just curl the ends a little bit without curling them up towards the ceiling. But she is all up for it. She told me she wanted something different. So I'm going to just put a little bit more hairspray here because I want this to be super polished. And um, just very, Gently um, polish that. And she's all ready. She is ready. So whether this is like her wedding day or bachelorette day or whatever it is, she is ready. It is stunning, Carla. I feel like it's 90s, but also has like a nod to the 60s, like Priscilla Presley wedding yeah, vibe. Totally. It <laughs> is. It's a little different, but I, I I, just wanted to do something different than like the textured look. Totally. Awesome. Yeah. In wrapping up this question, I need to have you answer for Karen Shields. Can the iron also be used as a wand? Could you show that real quickly? Before oh, yeah, definitely. 
I actually love curling my hair with this iron. So all you have to do is we have a detach button here. So you're just gonna press it and then you're going to pull the, the spoon off. So I love this because um, if you are doing hair on site, your kit is going to get heavy. You're gonna have a lot of irons. So this is like two in one. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carla. I think it's really refreshing to see different takes on bridal that aren't, you know, just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, boho, you know, the chic buns. So thank you for bringing something unique to the platform because I feel like, honestly, as Gen Z, you know, starts to get married in the next few years, this might be a look that. Yes, for sure. For yeah. sure. And thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. If anybody wants to follow me, my IG handle is Color Me Carla. I'm there to help you. If you want to, if you have any questions, you can feel free to DM me and I'll answer you. Um, also, I do hair color as well and I love styling. So if you need some education in your salon, I'd be more than happy to come visit you. Awesome. And you guys, if you try out this look, make sure you tag Carla on Instagram so she can check it out. And yes. I love sharing people's work. So if you tag me, I will definitely share it on my IG.